Are we ready? Okay. So hi and welcome. Uh, my name is Jan Kupets. I am member of SUSES uh, team and I mostly work on software management, on the software management library libzip and uh, the command line tool zipper. Zipper is what I will be talking about now. And the talk will consist of a quick overview, overview of all Zipper's commands. Uh, well, before that, I, uh, I would like to ask you how many of you didn't use Zipper at all so far? Okay, not many. Okay, thanks. So, a quick overview at the start. Most of the talk uh, I will dedicate to uh, give you some tips and tricks that uh, you may find useful and maybe you don't know about them yet. And I will conclude with a list of some most interesting future plans that we plan to do in the time frame of 11.2 release of OpenSUSE. So let's start with the features. First, what is Zipper for those who don't know it? It's a command line software manager. Of, I like taking screenshots of command line software, so I've made this beautiful one for you. It's, uh, it's showing Zipper searching for keyword Eclipse. Uh, it is an interface to libzip, the software management library, which does all the package management, all the software management stuff, and uh, Zipper is just a command line inter inter interface to it, but nevertheless, it is several thousands of lines uh, long, <laughs> so even the interface is quite a lot of work. A few words about history. Zipper is two and a half year f here, years old. It started in August uh, 2006 when Duncan McWicott started to uh, write his own command line tool to test the libzip library. A few weeks later, Martin Wittner took the code and uh, named the project Zipper. And a few months later, at the end of 2006, uh, Zipper was uh, first released in an OpenSUSE 10.2 distribution. Current stable release is in uh, OpenSUSE 11.1 .1 and its version 1.0, and development releases are version 1.1. So to the features, uh, we can categorize Zipper's uh, commands into several categories. Most obviously, when you, uh, when you are managing software on your system, you want to manipulate reposit software repositories. You want to query for package information. You want to install, obviously. Uh, you, you want to manage updates and several special tasks. So when managing repositories, you want to be able to add them. Of course, you can uh, edit the text configuration files in etc, zip, repos d, but uh, with, with a command line tool, it's just more convenient. You can add them, remove them, list them, modify them, refresh, which means download, downloading package met uh, met metadata from the repositories and compiling them into internal cache for quick access. Uh, this service stuff I will mention later, so I'll just keep it now. Querying, you can search for, uh, for packages by their names, descriptions, summaries, and so on. Uh, you can print detailed info about packages, patterns, patches, and so on. You can list all patterns, all packages, all patches that are avail available. You can query for dependency information. In fact, this is the only command now, but I'll, I'll tell about future plans. Uh, the main thing you want to do is install. There is an install command. Uh, about this install new recommends command, I'll tell later. Uh, you want to manage updates. We have three approaches to, to update uh, software with, uh, on OpenSUSE. 
The first one, listing updates and updating is uh, package-wise, uh, where you just take newer versions of packages that are installed, and if they are installable, of then, then you just install them, the new versions. Uh, another approach is patch-wise. Uh, this, this is a specialty. Uh, mostly open source maintenance updates are delivered as patches. Uh, you have to have a spe spe special repository providing patches in order to use this feature. And distribution upgrade is a special update algorithm that can handle split packages, uh, obsolete packages, and stuff like that. Uh, you usually uh, use it to switch to newer, newer release, stable release. Then you can protect packages to avoid changes like don't install specific package, don't remove specific package. Uh, don't upgrade it and so on. For example, you can uh, avoid updating kernel, for example. And then some special commands. Most, of inter most interesting of these is this verify command. This will check the integrity of dependencies of your installed packages and if there are some broken dependencies it proposes to install packages in order to satisfy them. Uh, zipper has quite nice help system. If you just type zipper, it will list all the global options and commands that is available to it. And if you type zipper help and specific command, you will get a specific command description and all the command specific options that, is, that are available for the command. Also, the man, man page is quite extensive. To the general features, I will talk in detail later about them, just to, list, just to name them now. Zipper has non-interactive mode, XML output, it can work on an alternative root directory, and uh, this feature is actually shared uh, with Yast as well because it's, it's a libzip feature, not zip feature, but it's quite interesting, so I wanted to mention it now. The zipper can work with many medium types. I'll uh, more details later. So now, to the fun. Uh, the basic things that you, can, you want to do with zipper is install software. Well, the most obvious way is to type zipper install and the name of a package. Uh, if you don't care about which version it will install from which repository and so on. But uh, these are some uh, special cases. Uh, one of my favorite is that you can install a plain RPM file with Zipper, either local or remote or on any media type that libzip supports later on that. Uh, you can also install specific version most of software managers can do that i just want to i just wanted to show you how do you do it in zipper you can install specific architecture as well uh, if uh, if you for example are compiling some source code and it is com complaining about some missing library you can try issuing command like this and if the package metadata contains provide symbols with, for example, libcurl, shared object. Uh, if you are lucky, you can, you can get installed, you, you can get this library installed just with this command. Uh, one of the nice things are software pattern, patterns. Uh, you can install, for example, a lamp server with with just one, with just this command. You s first, you can search for patterns. Just give the type option to the search command. It will list all the patterns available, and then you can install it with with the same type option and the name of the pattern. The same for products and patches, and packages as well. But package is the default here. This is. One of my other favorite features of Zipper, uh, you can install source 
packages and their build dependencies. This is very handy for developers. Uh, just search for search uh, for for source packages in your repository, like like with the pattern case. And if the repository contains uh, source packages, it will list them, and you you use the package name in the source install command. It will install the source package and all of its build dependencies, which are not installed yet. You can also uh, f there is also option to install only the build dependencies or only the uh, source package. Uh, this install new recommends command is a special feature of Lipsat Solver, Lipsat Solver, of of the underlying solver, uh, and it it is handy for installing, uh, for example, hardware drivers or language uh, packages for install for already installed packages. For example, if you plug in a web camera there is a good chance that this this command will install the, the needed driver for the camera or if you have a graphics card and you add a repository providing the driver for the graphics card it will propose to install this driver okay now for managing repositories, Zipper has quite a lot of options to make this convenient for you. For example, you can modify several repos at once with these aggregate options all remote. There, You can modify uh, repositories of specific uh, media type and so on. For example, this command turns off uh, automatic refresh for all repositories. This command uh, turns on uh, caching of RPM packages for all remote repositories like HTTP, FTP, Samba, and so on. Uh, you can backup and restore repositories. You can export all your repos from the system with this command option onto the repos command. And then you can res restore them with add repo and give in the repo file as argument. Or you can restore them on your new computer and so on. Uh, with each command, you can use a temporary additional repository without having to add the repo uh, permanently to your system. Just give the plus repo and repo URL. Then many commands, uh, for many commands there is this repo op option available which uh, makes Zipper only load the specified repositories and work with them. For example, to do a distribution upgrade with only main OpenSUSE repository and for example Pac-Man Pac -Man repository, you can specify these two repositories just like this and perform the, the dis distribution upgrade. Uh, this this one is handy if you don't have internet connection and you have many repositories with auto refresh turned off. In that case, Zipper would check uh, check the repository if it's up to date. It would need connection for that. You can use this command to avoid that, avoid Zipper connecting at all. Can be handy. Uh, I should mention repository priorities here. Uh, actually, I screwed that up a bit. Uh, Libzip supports them, but uh, Zipper ignores them now. Uh, I'll be fixing it for, for the next release. But uh, it's a very handy thing. You can assign priorities uh, to repositories and, uh, the, for example, the install command, if you install a specific package and uh, even if there exists better version in a repository which has lower priority, it will take the 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 older version from the repository from with the higher priority. This can be handy if, if you if you have several reports providing the same packages and you trust one of the reports more, for example, for having more stable packages and so on. Uh, one of the nice things of Zipper is that you can use it use it from 
from, from scripts and front ends. There are several things enabling this. For example, the non-interactive mode in which uh, you, you can specify this global option to any command, and in that mode, Zipper won't ask for, for confirmation or for any user input on standard input, and it will, uh, it will use default answers uh, automatically. This option can be useful if you if you are working, for example, with your own repositories and you want to avoid questions uh, or prompts like whether you want to import new repository key to the database and RPM file checks and so on. Uh, then there are four verbosity levels. Quiet is obviously the one which you want to use when scripting. Normal is uh, f uh, for for common use out of uh, out of uh, scripts and front ends, and purpose is for debugging debugging obviously. Uh, then there is XML output for general output like normal messages, error messages, warnings, and so on, and also for prompts and some special output. Uh, all of this you can use in various, for example, graphical uh, front-ends. Uh, you can tell Zipper to use alternative root directory. This can be handy for creating a change root environment or for building uh, your own uh, appliance actually Kiwi at least was using it uh, in order to do this. I'm not sure if it still does. Uh, Yast product creator as well. Uh, it it can be handy, for example, also to if uh, if you specify an empty root directory and tell Zipper to install some package. Oh, first you have to add a repository there. And then you tell installs uh, tell Zipper to install some package. You will act, you will immediately see what other packages does that package depend on, and how many max megabytes it will add to that root directory when installed, and how many it will need to retrieve. Well, to the media types. Uh, here are some examples. For example, you can use uh, an ISO image of, for example, SUSE CD, like uh, as, as a software repository. The same for Samba Share. Uh, uh, almost obviously, HTTP, FTP repos, uh, also NFS shares, and many others. Here are more examples. Uh, for example, you can plug in your USB hard drive and tell Zipper to install an RPM package from it, just like this. You have to specify the device uh, under which it, it is known to the system. Uh, all these URLs in, the, in this shape you can use also in Yast. It's a libzip feature. Okay, what do we have here? A similar thing, like like I mentioned, in with the root directory, you can do with this uh, global option. This will avoid uh, loading the installed uh, packages to the into the memory. So Zipper will act as if no packages were installed in on on the system. And if you tell tell it to install Zipper, you will immediately see what kind of packages does Zipper depend on. It, this can be useful for developers, for packages mostly. Okay, uh, this this is a workaround for a feature that it isn't in libzip yet, but it we are working on it. Uh, many people request that uh, we should be able to first download all the packages and then install them at once. 
you can do it actually with this workaround. You turn on caching of uh, RPM files. Then you do a command, for example, install update or dist upgrade or any other um, that installs packages with the dry run options. This passes uh, the test option to the RPM command. And uh, by this, the uh, all the needed packages get downloaded, but not installed, only tested. And then you do the actual install. So they first get downloaded, and then then you get in, you get them installed for for real. It's just a workaround, and currently it is being worked on the real support for this. <laughs> now for the services, this is uh, actually a new thing, and it is not used uh, widely as yet. But uh, I just want to tell you. What is it all about so that you can probably pick it up and provide services? Uh, the idea is to, to provide a list of repositories relevant for your architecture, for your target system. Uh, on under one URL, you add this URL as service and you get a list of uh, of services as a response, which Zipper uses to add or remove repositories. And uh, by, uh, by doing this, uh, you can leave uh, the, the task of maintaining the, up, um, the relevant repositories uh, on, on, the s on the service provider. You just do refresh services and it removes obsolete repositories, it will add new repositories, then you just choose several of them, enable them with modify repo command, and then you just use it like usual repositories. More information here, you don't need to write it down, the slides will be available on the FOSDEM side, I guess. Oh, so that's it for the tricks, and now a few words about future plans. First, we will be working to improve the current installation summary to include things like uh, version changes, arc changes, vendor changes, to list recommended suggested packages uh, apart from, from the others, from the hard required packages. Uh, we would like to include uh, viewing of change logs when updating packages and maybe also dependence in tree of the, of the packages being installed. Then we will introduce a configuration file for Zipper. There is many things speci specific for Zipper that can be, that would be good if it were configurable. Then this, this option will be available everywhere where currently repo option is used and it will basically select packages from the repository you specified but it won't uh, disable the others so it can satisfy dependencies uh, from the others. We will completely remake the info command to be more useful. Uh, I mentioned what provides query command. Uh, the plan is to add uh, more dependency querying commands. Well, these are similar to, to those that are available in RPM uh, command line tool, but apart uh, or what's different is that these command will query also repositories, not only installed packages like RPM does. Mm, well, then there will be some output polishing. Most most wanted feature the overall installation progress with estimated time, and these are the most important ones. The ideas, uh, the number of ideas is quite a huge, so we won't get angry if 
if you take some of the ideas or bugs that are open and fix them and send them send as a patch you can get all the information needed how to contact us what are the mailing mailing list what are IR, what are, what is our irc channel and so on on this wiki page on opensuse org so we'll be glad if you join us and here are some links Zipper's homepage, uh, my blog where I uh, post some interesting stuff about Zipper, and this is the Git repository where we well where where we host our project. So that's it. If you have some questions, how do I turn it on? It is on. <laughs> Hi. Um, suppose uh, I install fresh uh, OpenSUSE and start using Zipper to manage my software. Um, is uh, by the way, the, does it get installed by default? Yes. Wait. Okay. Uh, I, do they uh, do they work together with Yast? I mean, do they keep their information about installed packages in the in the same place? Yes, uh, they actually both use the RPM database. So even if, if you install packages with RPM tool, uh, they they both will know about them. Uh, also, they share the libzip library. Uh, Zipper uses the same software management library that Yast does. So all the repositories known to Zipper are known to Yast. All the installed packages known to Zipper are known to Yast as well. So I can mix the usage of yes, both. Yes, absolutely. Okay, well, I have uh, several more questions, but I don't know if I can occupy so much time. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll, be, I'll be around. I'll be available here or at the OpenSUSE booth. So if you have more questions, just contact me. Thank you for your attention.